Hello, Clever Warrior. Today, we're going to talk about a question, which is, how has the internet changed your relationship with stuff and shopping? <laughs> and it's not a rhetorical question, nor is it necessarily a loaded question. I am actually curious to hear how it has changed your relationship with stuff and certainly how it has shifted your relationship with consuming and shopping. I can tell you for me, uh, it's certainly easier, right, to not leave your home, to be able to click a button, uh, and whether you're shopping at someplace as gargantuan as Amazon or a, a local business that still has some sort of e-commerce element to it, it's quite simple to pick something up. Not literally, obviously, other than maybe your smartphone or your tablet or your mouse. But it's much easier to consume things. Uh, conversely, it has also become easier to let things go. And so uh, from my point of view, we should be looking at both of those things. So I'll share a story with you about my own life. Uh, in a recent episode, I talked about being back in Michigan and uh, helping my mom clean out her garage. Uh, in her basement, we also came across some rugs that I had left in her home from uh, my house in Pennsylvania, I think might have been the last place I had those rugs. I think that's right. Uh, and I sold that house in... 2010. So I've been there for a while. And uh, I've moved around. I had rugs and I didn't have a, I mean, I had a three bedroom house in Pennsylvania. So I had plenty of room for rugs. And then when I moved back into Manhattan full time uh, in my smaller apartments, not a need for more than two, maybe three rugs. So they were in the basement at my mom's house. I decided to bring them all back home to Florida with me because I figured I'm either going to use them or I'm going to sell them. And that's where I'm headed. Uh, the beautiful thing about the internet, while there's the, we can call it the dangerous part of the internet that allows things to come really quickly, we now, all of us have the ability, whether it's through a local marketplace like Facebook Marketplace or Nextdoor, or through uh, an online website, like mm, depending on the quality of your things, it could be someplace like First Dibs or Sotheby's Home, or even possibly Cherish, or another, you know, all of the other places like The Real Real, Poshmark, um, all of those other places where you can sell some housewares and definitely some clothing. So what I decided to do was to get rid of the rugs online. I don't want to I didn't want to donate them if there was an opportunity to harvest some money out of them. That's a snag for many of us, right? Like if I can get some good money for these things, I definitely let them go. But I got so much sunk into it already. I can't possibly do the math in my head, but it's really more about your feelings than it is really about the math, right? I can't do the math and justify letting this go at such a at such a loss. But we we don't like that uh, Visa commercial, right? It, it's not exactly priceless, but it's hard to put a price on the, the improvement or the complication that these objects created in our life. So when we're doing the math, there's often an element that it's hard to nail down into simple straight math. I've had these rugs for quite some time. Obviously, they've been sitting in my mom's basement for 12 years. Before that, I mean, some of them were gifted to me by uh, clients of mine who had beautiful things that they were done with. Uh, some of them I purchased. So, you know, it's all relative when we try to assign value to these things, because even though my client might have spent good money for them, I didn't. Uh, and so whatever I can get for them, I'm ahead of the game. And I've used them for however long I had them on the floor before they were rolled up in the basement. So you can see how it's, it again, it becomes a trap when we start to focus on the money and what we think something is worth, that we often will uh, hold on to something 
things. Look, if you're an antiques dealer, if you're a rug dealer, uh, then you might be able to time the market well to place these things and optimize your return. But for most of us, and certainly I put myself in that category, I, I mean, while I do interior design work for some of my clients, I'm not a trader in antiques or art or rugs. So I'm not gonna be able to time the market. And for me, the freedom of having fewer things that I don't use far outweighs the monetary piece, the time that I'll spend trying to get these things gone, much better to just, you know, take what I can get, get them out of the house, which is the objective. So there's an opportunity here as you're going through your things to take into stock. It might not be taking up a lot of physical space, but it might be taking up a lot of mental space or emotional space not to mention spiritual space, for you to have these things in some ways looming in the background, right? Just, ooh, I still have all that stuff in that closet. Boy, I wish that stuff was gone. Well, it can be gone. Now there are many ways on the internet for you to let things go. So they can come in quicker. They can also go out quicker. And there's an opportunity to get some money for these things rather than the previous alternative of either doing a yard sale, stoop sale, or donating them, right? Or taking them, I suppose, again, if they have particular value, you could take them to a third-party auction house. Just know that as soon as you do that, there's a 50% decrease in whatever the market value for them would be. The, no auction house is going to take less than 50% of whatever it's sold for. So you really want to reserve that as an option for significant pieces that there's enough value that what you will net is worth letting it go in that direction. And you always have to figure what is your time worth. So if it takes you 30 minutes to post it online versus 30 minutes to give to an auction house, maybe it's worth the 30 minutes first to see if you can sell it. And then if not, then you can turn it over to a, a third party vendor who would be, you know, who already has an audience and a market one assumes for these things. So that's a little bit of my experience with stuff and the internet. As I said, I would love to hear about yours. So in the comments below, please let us know what you've been doing with the stuff and how the internet has influenced your consumption and hopefully also your releasing of things. That's it for today's episode. Thanks for tuning in. I look forward to being back with you again real soon.